Welcome back and ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I wanna stay focused on what I believe that are opportunities presenting themselves. If you're new to the channel, we called out PayPal, we called out Zoom, we called out CVS. And one of the most bullish stocks that I've been looking at has definitely been Cisco Systems. That has been one of my largest holdings. I have been taking profits as of late and I wanna go over why that is. Now, this is not a recommendation to buy or sell stocks, but I just wanna talk through a few different things here. So if you're new to the channel, you like fundamental analysis, be sure to like and subscribe and let's get into today's video. Now, with Jerome Powell set to speak around 1 p.m. today, I definitely think markets can be on edge here. We're hitting new all-time highs. And the biggest thing that could derail us having a soft landing is believed to be a policy mistake by the Federal Reserve. And that's kind of been my thesis on the channel. But I wanna revert back to a video that I did the other day where we talked about the little book that still beats the market. There's some interesting things, dynamics in there when we just look at a couple simple things we need to be looking at when we're buying individual equities and taking on that risk. A, we have to be buying it at a discount in order for it to really be worth the risk of us putting money into one stock. Buying a stock on a discount, it allows the company to still have mistakes and still be undervalued. But also if the company executes at a high level, you have greater opportunity for stock appreciation. So buying stocks at all time highs, is kind of where this starts getting frothy. But now the question is, where do you put money when interest rates are coming down? And that's where it's getting harder. And that's why I said this is going to force a lot of people and maximize pain, in my opinion, as I do think there's an opportunity for a recession at the end of 2025. And I think we're starting to see signs that look very similar to 2007, not quite identical, but similar. The one thing I want to point out here is going to be moving averages. Now, I'm also going to break down individual stocks, but I kind of want to just give you guys a macro outlook here. We obviously know that there is multiple land wars taking place, a presidential election that's happening. And I think there's a lot of things that can derail this market. Now, the China stimulus obviously is helping things stay afloat, and it's obviously giving a bid under the Chinese market right now. These trend lines that are drawn and exactly what you're seeing in front of you is the S&P 500 companies that are trading above the 50 day moving average. Anytime it starts getting between 80 to 90%, we kind of have to start looking at this as being a little euphoric. Now the moving averages just smooth all the price action out. That's all a moving average does. We see price actions go up and down four and 5% on a daily basis. But when we look at that price action moving on a longer historical time frame such as a 50 day moving average, all that does is smooth out where stocks are truly trading. And so when we look at where stocks are truly trading, they're really trading at an upper band where we need to kind of be cautious here. As we've seen numerous times, when we start reaching these levels of companies trading around 85 to 90%, we have to be concerned here because that means that that's a little euphoric. Are all these companies really doing that well that they should be trading that high? And I think we can look at retail, we can look at different sectors and, and say that possibly not. Obviously we know technology is doing really well and some other companies are doing, and some other sectors are doing really well, but as a whole, should the market really be trading at these types of valuations or should it be really moving above its 50 day moving average like this? And this is where I think we're getting to euphoric kind of behavior here. Over this is a 10 year chart. So we can see when we start getting around 90 to 95, that's when we really need to be concerned. And even taking it out to a 20 year chart, this this is pretty historical patterns here where we're starting to hit this yellow trend line that I have drawn right around 88%. We're currently sitting right around 81, 82% of companies that are trading above the 50 day moving average. Now let's do one more thing and let's bump into the 200 day moving average. This is going to be a longer trend line and let us know kind of where we are once again. So once again, this is a 20 year monthly moving average and we can see that we could push above 90% on this, 90% of stocks trading above the 200 day moving average. Where are we currently sitting right now? We're sitting at 78. That's where I think we have to start looking at possibly taking profits is when we break above 80, 81%. When we start getting around 81, percent of companies that are trading above their 200 day moving average and company and about 85 percent of companies that are trading above the 50 day moving average to me is signaling mass euphoric behavior in this market here so as you guys can see we're right up against this trend line pushing 78 percent of companies i think we can reach 81 82 percent and that's where i would start saying this is getting pretty euphoric and how we can kind of back that up is also looking at where we're looking at close to 29 times earning on the s p 500 forward pe probably sitting closer to 22 which is historically rich so we start lining up the fact that valuations are 
historically high. Very much euphoric behavior when we look at price act price action of stocks when we look at the moving average of both the 50 day and the 200 day. Now, if you've been following the channel, we've brought up the K-Web numerous times and said this is a good opportunity to possibly buy the K-Web when it was trading in the low 20s. And we brought up names like Baba and stuff like that. So if you were already positioned there, you've done extremely, extremely well. I would be cautious on the move going forward. Uh, I think it might have a little bit more legs, but I also think that we could be looking at just the initial pop of buying the rumors and selling the news and right now the news is out there and i think people are probably going to be selling into this after this now i just want to talk through a few names that i'm keeping an eye on if we do get a market pullback and some names that i might be looking to be adding into here okay so this is not financial advice this is just kind of where i'm starting to look when we're looking at valuations these are some names that i actually think are becoming fairly interesting so this is one that I brought up before and it's open text. Now, if you guys remember, I did buy this around 27, 28 bucks. I sold it around 33 and it shot up to $43. Now back down to right around 32 bucks a share. And I'm keeping an eye on this one because as we see here, price action has kind of just been all over the place, but it's been going in a downward direction over the last five years. The stock's down nearly 20% over the last five years. This is a company that does pay a 3.19% dividend yield. Well, we look at the price going down, but yet we can see that revenue still in an upward direction and we got nice earnings growth following that. You know, this one definitely piques my interest here, especially when we look at it from a valuation standpoint. This is a company trading at nine times earnings. We get a substantial pullback. We could be looking at six, seven times earnings. They have shown growth here. This was a company doing 3.1 billion in revenue, now doing 5.7 billion in revenue. But take a look at this. This was a company doing 86 cents of earnings, now doing a dollar seventy of earnings and this is where i think the value kind of lies with the company it's not a straight line up but we can see 86 cents a dollar 14 a dollar 46 came down to 56 cents of earnings but now back up to a dollar 70. this is a company that does two to three dollars of free cash flow so you're looking at depending on where you get in if you get in around 30 bucks a share you're looking at over you're looking at over a 10 percent free cash flow yield on a small cap company with a decent valuation that could still be growing here you know, this is a company that offers everything from cloud to business AI, business technology, collaboration. Now, one of the areas we wanna take a look at is return on invested capital. Return on invested capital sitting at 5.22%, nothing really great, but when I look at a lot of different metrics on this company, we talk about valuation. They are earning some yield on capital deployed, which is good to see not as much as we would like to see, but then we take a look at free cash flow per share sitting at $3 a share. So the forecasted to do right around 5.5 billion in 2025, 5.6 billion in 2026, and we can see here that it's probably going to be two to 3% revenue growth once we get past 2026. You can see here, now I got them doing 5.5 billion in 2025, 5.6 billion in 2026, and so on and so forth. I mean, it's really eye-opening when you see the valuation here of a forward gap, a forward gap PE basis. It's trading at 19 times, and industry standards trading at almost 30 times. So we could, and then when we bring it down to their net income margin sitting at 8%, well, industry standards at three to four percent. Lot once again, a lot, a lot of things to like about this company here. Dividend history, it's been paying that dividend for 10 consecutive years, been growing that dividend for seven consecutive years. I think it's a very interesting sector, probably. If it has legitimate AI capabilities, this could be one of the most underrated stocks in most of the stock market here, trading at nine times forward earnings uh, from a gap basis, trading at 19 times when industry standard or sector median is about 29 times. Actually, see this one pull back harder than most is because it's under a $10 billion market cap. Historically, trades between eight to $10 billion. So it's under that market cap where those companies tend to be thrown out, baby with the bathwater sell first, ask questions later, that could be a company that you might want to pick up um, some shares fairly cheap. Now, another one I'm interested in, can't seem to wrap my head around the valuation, but now it's getting pretty interesting, is going to be Pinterest. I've talked about this one a few different times, kind of been consolidating here between call it 21 to 33 bucks a share. When we look at sentiment around the stock, we have a low of 32, a high of 52. And this is a company that's still projected to grow double digits, into the future here and earnings growth to be growing around 20 percent which is pretty strong when we consider the fact that valuation on the stock sitting around 20 times forward earnings this is a company that should be growing 16 17 percent pretty consistently right around 4.3 billion in 2025 and 5 billion in 2026. so once again building some safety in this one just in case if they don't grow to the standard that we're seeing 
Uh, I do think this is between a $25 to $26 stock. I think this is one we need to be looking at because of the potential revenue growth that's ahead. I think management has been very strong. Let me know down in the comments if you're looking at any individual stocks that are starting to pique your interest. But hopefully you guys enjoyed exactly what I'm personally looking at, the fact that I'm taking profits, why I'm taking profits now. A warning sign that we are getting a little stretched or a little long in the tooth for I think what's been taking place when we take a look at kind of the downside risk versus the upside risk. I definitely think it's a little bit more lopsided more now than ever. Uh, and the closer we get to the end of the year, the more I think that there's opportunity for a market pullback. And I just want to point out one last thing to people that are interested in the charts here as well. Not, not only do we, not only are we looking at the companies trading above their moving averages, both the 50 day, the 200 day, but we're also starting to see that we are heading into a higher risk period as we start approaching into October, mainly the middle to the end of October is where I start thinking we're going to see this market turning down. So from here on out to mid-October to end of October, I do think this is a good opportunity to kind of take some chips off the table. So when I look at what's happening on the technicals here, this is a trend line that's kind of been in place since the October lows, and we're trading now back beneath it. And it's been a great point of resistance as we've seen. We've hit it multiple times and trading underneath it. And as we're trading underneath it, we are hitting newer highs, but I would say that the market functionality is definitely weakening. So I think that we're seeing liquidity kind of dry up here and we're starting to see technicals start to roll over. Not any confirmation yet, guys, but I do think it lines up well with the end of October still. And then when I line up the valuations of the overall stock market, we line up at how many companies are trading above 50 day versus 200 day and how often that happens. It's a pretty rare occurrence to see it trading at these levels. And then we just topple in the fact that things are starting to kind of roll over here and slow down. That's starting to signal maybe a red flag. You know, we have a divergence here on the McClellan oscillator. Take a look at this McClellan oscillator pointing down as the market has been making new highs. That's a signal to me that we're getting a little stretched in the tooth. And once we get the stochastic starting to roll over here and we get confirmation of a crossover, that to me is going to be the signal that we probably are reaching a top in this market. Not quite there yet, we could hit newer highs, but just giving you guys a signal of why I personally have taken some profits here, and I'm looking to redistribute in certain areas, and those are two names that I'm kind of keeping an eye on personally. Doesn't mean I'm necessarily gonna buy them, but they're definitely on my watch list. As always, guys, really appreciate your time, and we will see you in the next one.